Labor Day in the Valley. The Diamondbacks going about their labors, opening up a three-game series against some visitors from the north. The true north, strong and free here in the desert southwest. It's the Toronto Blue Jays and the Arizona Diamondbacks, first of three here at Chase Field on Fox Sports Arizona. Good afternoon from Chase Field. Happy Labor Day. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthune, Bob Brenly along the way. The first of three against the Blue Jays from Toronto and the American League East. And, Bob, this is a ball club that made a lot of noise in the offseason with some big free agent moves, some big trades, and for whatever reason, it just hasn't worked out. So the question for you is, who are these guys? <laughs> well, we're going to show you some numbers for the Toronto Blue Jays. And as you uh, digest those numbers, keep this in mind. If it were not for the Houston Astros moving to the American League, they would have the worst pitching staff in the league. They've lost more games to injury than any other team in the American League, and the combination of bad pitching and lots of injuries add up to a very disappointing season for the Blue Jays. Jose Bautista, Josh Johnson, Brandon Morrow, Melky Cabrera, Colby Rasmus are all out with injuries. Now the Diamondbacks lately have been led not by Paul Goldschmidt but by some of their other key hitters, notably a former Blue Jay, Aaron Hill, who is not in the lineup tonight, and Martin Prado who continues his hitting tear. Well, August is always the hottest month here in the Valley, and these were the two hottest hitters in the month of August. Both guys just absolutely putting the team on the their shoulders and carrying them to what victories the Diamondbacks have been able to record in the month of August. Hopefully they'll stay hot for one more month and give the D-backs a chance to crawl back into that wild card race. We are into September now and September could be a critical month for the Diamondbacks starter today. Brandon McCarthy who in his last start looked outstanding. We'll see if he can continue that success here today. As good as we've seen McCarthy this year commanding everything kept the ball out of the middle of the plate pitched aggressively in the strike zone. Uh, I'd love to see more of that from Brandon McCarthy. Missed all that time in the middle of the season with that shoulder injury. Hopefully he's in midseason form right now. Brandon McCarthy and Esmeel Rogers, the starting of pitchers for this first of three against the Blue Jays. When we come back, more interleague intrigue and the Diamondbacks against the American League have been perfect at home. Jody Jackson has more on the D-backs efforts to continue their interleague run when we come back.
BMO Harris Bank, the very definition of at your service. And by Fulton Holmes, you're proud to own, we're proud to build. And back here at Chase Field on this Labor Day, Brandon McCarthy set to go against the Blue Jays. He'll make his seventh start against Toronto as the Blue Jays visit here at Chase for the first time since 2010. Jody Jackson back with you outside the Diamondbacks dugout and the D-backs have been very good in interleague play this year at home. No question about it. And it hasn't always been a cakewalk. There have been some very dramatic victories by the numbers though. You see that they are 7-0. and Two games, two wins against Texas, two wins against Tampa and a sweep of the Baltimore Orioles. You see that they've been high scoring games. There have been six comeback wins. There have been four walk-off wins and you may remember Remember the Orioles, well, all three of those games won in walk-off fashion. So you look at it, it should be an interesting matchup now against the Toronto Blue Jays. And a couple of guys have had pretty good success against Esmil Rogers, Willie Bloomquist, 3-4-9. And Aaron Hill is not in the game today, though. He's had success against his former team. So much to look for in this unique matchup between the Blue Jays and the D-backs as Brandon McCarthy looks to keep it going. He got the win last time out. He hopes to make it two in a row against Toronto. Stay with us. First pitch next with Stephen Bob. Heads to the mound to face John Gibbons, Toronto Blue Jays, the first of three against Toronto here in the Valley. And the Blue Jays uh, come in having won five of their last seven under their skipper, John Gibbons. Back uh, here, Bob Renley, uh, for a second go-round running this ball club. Yeah, very uh, unusual. You re rarely see a manager get fired unless it's Billy Martin in New York and then uh, get rehired to come back to the same organization. But that's the case with John Gibbons and the Toronto Blue Jays. Blue Jays have lost seven of their uh, eight and nine of their last 11 on the road. A sputtering a bit here. They have been decimated by injuries. They had big plans back in April when it hasn't quite worked out. Hey, you're going to need a program today, folks. Jose Reyes in the leadoff spot, a familiar name. Ryan Goins at second base, not quite so familiar. Edwin Encarnacion, former Cincinnati Red at first base. Brent Lowry, fine young third baseman, will be batting fourth. Moises Sierra in right field. Josh Tolley, the former Met, doing the catching today. Kevin Pilar in left field. Anthony Ghost 
in center field, and Esmiel Rogers on the mound today for the Blue Jays. And for the Diamondbacks, it's Brandon McCarthy. His numbers this season coming off a very encouraging start his last time out against the Padres. He gave up only one unearned run in seven. No walks, five strikeouts. It was his first win since May 24th. Yeah, between the ineffectiveness early in the season, the injuries in the middle of the season, Brandon McCarthy looking for something positive here in the final month of the season, coming off, as you said, Arguably his best start of the year. Seven strong innings, five hits, shutout baseball against the Padres. Familiar face to National League fans. Jose Reyes, the shortstop, steps in. He lets that one high in the air to short right field. Parra and Prado out there. And there is Gerardo Parra with a first out. You'll note Martin Prado getting the start. So he's been moving all over lately today. He's at second base. Here's how Gibby's going to line him up today. Adam Eaton in left. Tony Campana getting a start in center field. We just saw Gerardo Parra in right. It'll be Chavez and Pennington on the left side of the infield. Prado and Goldschmidt on the right side. Will Nieves spelling Miguel Montero today behind the plate. And he'll be receiving pitches from right-hander Brandon McCarthy. Former Blue Jays great Aaron Hill sitting this one out against his old team. Not in the lineup. Prado. Getting the start at second. Aaron Hill getting a day off as Ryan Goen steps in. This Jays fan still loves you, Hill. They still love you back in Toronto, Aaron. And why not? Had a nice run there. Ryan Goen's the second baseman. This is a guy they like a lot. A converted shortstop. Former fourth-round pick at 09. And he's off to a good start here at 353. Hard to second and right to Prado. Nice high hop for Martin. Two up, two down for Brandon McCarthy. And if there's a bat to watch out for in this lineup, it's uh, walking into the right-hand batter's box. Edwin Encarnacion, he can mash. For a free swinger, he rarely strike outs only... 57 punch outs on the season and over 500 at bats. He's walked 76 times. And he can he can launch some missiles. Cool. And this is something, Bob, we were talking about earlier in the year. You rarely see this a shift for a right hand power hitter. You have three infielders on the left hand side, and sure enough, he goes the other way. Here comes Para. Good start for Brandon McCarthy. Three up, three down. Labor Day at Chase Field. Glad you're with us. It's not surprising that uh, fly ball to right field by Encarnacion. Uh, we're going to show you a replay of this. We counted 22 steps for Gerardo Parra as this ball's lofted into the air, a short jab step. And then we counted 22 strides to get to that ball near the right field line. He was playing way over in the gap in right center. What a nice running catch by Gerardo Parra. He's already in game shape, a half inning in. 
Diamondbacks set to face. Ismail Rogers started last season in the Rockies bullpen, so the name may be familiar to Diamondbacks fans. He was let go last June, picked up by Cleveland. Indians dealt him to Toronto last November for Mike Avilis and Jan Gomes, and here he is on the mound for the Blue Jays. Full complement of pitches out there for Rogers. Uh, he'll mix it up depending on what's working on a given day. A four seamer, a two seamer, okay. has a nice slider, occasional curveball, occasional changeup. And a funky delivery. Very funky. Comes in sections. A good velocity on the four seam fastball, a pitch that he usually tries to elevate in the zone. Tony Campana right back to you. Two pitches, one out for Ismil Rogers, making his 16th start of the year. The Blue Jays are 7-8 and eight when he starts. This is the lineup for Kirk Gibson. Well, we've seen Campana at the top. Adam Eaton batting second once again. Paul Goldschmidt in that third spot. Chavez, Prado, Parra make up the middle of the lineup. Nieves, Pennington, and McCarthy make up the bottom. And once again in the two-hole for the Diamondbacks, a place in which he says he feels comfortable. It's Adam Eaton at 277, couple of home runs. Coming off a big month of August. Alan Porter is the plate umpire this afternoon. Goldie on deck. Which for Goldie means going to that same spot every time. Right along the edge of the railing. Good 10, 12 feet to the left of the actual on deck circle. And that plants that back foot in there and starts that axe chop motion. Bounce to second base. Ryan Goins. Two up, two down. Here's Goldie. Defensively, Toronto looks as such. They do have Reyes at shortstop, but we're told he's not moving all that well. Yeah, has a left ankle injury. He's still recovering from. Doesn't go to his left up the middle of the field very well. We'll keep an eye on that. It'll be Pilar in left, Ghost in center, Sierra in right, Lowry and Reyes on the left side, Goins and Encarnacion on the right side. Former Red Josh Tolley behind the plate for right-hander Esmeal Rogers. And a guy to watch in that outfield is the center fielder, Anthony Goes. He can fly, and he has an absolute cannon for a throwing arm. Paul Goldschmidt. Goldie, 297, 31 homers and 104 RBIs. Those are both career highs, the homers and the RBIs. And he's got September to add to those totals. Eric Chavez on deck. Bob, well, doesn't seem like Goldie's getting much to hit these days. Uh, everybody just away, 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 away. Rarely come inside. And when they do, it's usually just for effect. Throw a good fastball off the plate inside just to make him aware of the velocity of an inside fastball. And then usually go right back away with the next pitch. Josh Tolley and Esmil Rogers getting on the same page. Yeah, Goldie's walks the last week, two weeks, just going through the roof. It seems like two or three walks every ball game. I still think he's got another real good run in him before the end of the season. One of those uh, week or 10 days or two week stretches where you just can't get him out. And hopefully that'll be enough to solidify that National League MVP award for Paul. Luchador Mask. We have Luchador Cape Knight coming up later this month at Chase Field. Drives that one to right. Moises Sierra. And he makes a nice running catch to end the inning in right field for the Blue Jays. We are through one at Chase Field. No score.
No score set for the second inning here at Chase Field. Hey, fans, this week, UFC Wednesday premieres Fox Sports 1 with the prelim fights leading up to the main event on UFC Fight Night. Third-ranked light heavyweight Glover Teixeira takes on Ryan Bader. Then it's the season premiere of The Ultimate Fighter featuring rival coaches Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate. UFC Wednesday, 1 Pacific, 4 Eastern, with a UFC Fight Night pre-fight show this week on Fox Sports 1. Native Canadian Brett Laurie steps in. He'll lead off the second against Brandon McCarthy. Lori Sierra Tolley, 4, 5, and 6. This is a guy who is really fun to watch, Brett Lori. He plays full speed all the time, and if you're looking for sort of a poster boy for the run-through-a-wall for you type, this is it. Lifts that one at Tony Campana in center. And Brett Lori can play him some third base. He's played all over the field at some time or another, but I think he's found his niche down there at third. Look at that. Barehanded jump play, diving stop to his backhand side. A little blooper hit into foul territory yesterday. Nice diving catch. And that's a trade the Milwaukee Brewers regret. Uh, He was a first-round pick by the Brewers in 08, traded for Sean Markham. Uh, which was a big deal for Laurie, a native Canadian. And now he's playing in Blue Jay Blue and playing well. And Laurie's a little bit in the mold of Bryce Harper in D.C. Yeah. because he plays the game so hard with such an edge and a lot of energy. It can rub some opponents the wrong way, occasionally rub some teammates the wrong way. But, uh, man, I'll never fault the guy for playing the game with energy and playing hard. He can bring the want. Moises Sierra, the right fielder, right back to Tony Campana. And over his head, it's off the wall. Sierra will stop at second. His second double this year, and that's the first hit of the ball game. Catcher, number three. Like a little cutter, maybe a baby slider out there on the outer third of the plate. Sierra showing surprising pop to straightaway center field over the head of Tony Campana, who plays it on a hop off that wall right at the 407 mark. The catcher, Josh Tolley. One forty eight and a homer. Had some issues behind the plate. J.P. Aaron Sebia has uh, been the starter recently. Totally in there today, looking for some consistency back there. It'd be interesting to keep an eye on this particular uh, aspect of the game today. Will Nieves with a quick trip to the mound to talk to Brandon McCarthy. The Blue Jays historically have been a team that really stresses their base runners, give location and or pitches to the hitter at the plate when you're a runner at second base. Well, Sierra's just a kid. He recently got called up last month, so we'll see if he's been ingrained. There's a strike. 0-1. And, and in order to combat that, obviously, you have to use a sequence of signs like most teams always do, but you really have to be careful when you give your location or when you set up behind the plate. Be careful not to do it too early. So if I'm watching Sierra, what am I looking for at second base? Well, there's a lot of different things. You know, sometimes it's, uh, you know, hands on the knees, hands off the knees. For for an off-speed pitch, your hands are off your knees. For a fastball, your hands are on. If you're just giving location, it could be as simple as a head look one direction or the other. You could start your lead with your right foot if it's a pitch that's inside to a righty. Start your lead with your left foot if it's a pitch that's away to a righty. There's a lot of different ways to relay those signs to a hitter. When I played there in 89, uh, Cito Gaston took over about midseason for the Blue Jays, and he was a real stickler for the runners paying attention to those signs, trying to relay any help they could to the hitter. Roll to Prado at second, two down, and Sierra goes to third. It's a lot to think about if you're up there. I have to think about, oh, I have to start with my right foot. <laughs> it becomes second nature when you do it on a daily basis. And uh, I guarantee you the Diamondbacks coaching staff, not only against the Blue Jays, but against every team. When you get a runner out there to second base, they watch every move he makes. You watch your base coaches to make sure they're not relaying anything to the batter. It's just a uh, part of the game. And at some point you get content that uh, they're not doing anything out of the ordinary to relay pitches. And then you don't worry about it. But until you get to that point, if there's any suspicion at all, 
uh, you're going to keep a very close eye on the base runners and base coaches. Just a belt tug or a nod of the head, anything. Very huh? simple stuff. You get a little paranoid in there. And then uh, we've shown shots of the catcher before looking up at the batter while he's giving the signs. Uh, obviously, you don't want the batter himself to be peeking back there looking for things, but also you watch the batter's eyes to see where he's looking. Is he looking out to the mound or is he looking at the first base coach? Well, jam shot. They came inside. It's over the glove of Pennington, and that's a run. Sierra scores from third. RBI for Kevin Pillar, and it's one nothing Blue Jays. Little bleed or two out single. That's not how you hit him. It's where you hit him. And Pilar hits this one right off his knuckles. Just a little floater to that left side. Pennington just cannot quite get there. There's the center fielder, Anthony Ghost. Pilar on first, two outs. A run in. Goes 239. Not a lot of power in this bat. Uh, the defense, the speed, the throwing arm has always been there. They're sort of waiting for the bat to catch up to the rest of it. Gives that one a ride, though. High and deep to center. It's off the wall. Pilar comes in. He will score. Ghost is flying into third. Stand up triple. 2 nothing Blue Jays. Another guy that's not known for his power showing some here in his first at bat of the ball game straight away center field once again chases Campana right back to the padding. Fortunately Gerardo Parra comes into your picture here backing up the play from right field. Uh, it's a similar play we saw Adam Eaton make on that last road trip and he got a talking to from Kirk Gibson about when to know when to back off the wall and play the carom and when to continue and try to make the catch. Because once the ball caroms off the wall and gets behind you, it can roll goodness knows how far. Yeah. And with a guy with speed like uh, Ghost, that's a potential inside the park home run had it not been for Gerardo Parra's alert backup. Esmil Rogers, the pitcher. Chavez at third. Broken bat. That's the final out, but the Blue Jays. Get a single, a double, a triple. They get two runs. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Coming up for the Diamondbacks, Eric Chavez. It's 2-0 Toronto.
Neil, let's check the Twitter. Time for the AT&T Twitter poll question. Best Canadian musician. Oh, BB, this is right in your wheelhouse. Uh, Rush, Neil Young, Brian Adams, or Justin Bieber? Interesting. Tweet your vote to at Fox Sports AZ. Bob Renly, your thoughts. Well, I've never had Bieber fever. I'm a big Rush fan, but, uh, man, how can you go against Neil Young? What about Bob and Doug McKenzie? Oh, there you go. Take off, eh? Hey. To the Great White North. Getty Lee was actually the... Guy that sang the backups on that. Oh, I didn't know that. I got that in the iPod. Did our lawyers call you? Yeah, ten bucks is ten bucks. <laughs> Eric Chavez. <laughs> Take off to the Great White North. Hot dogs and luchador mats. Labor Day, Chase Field. Chavez, Prano, Para, 4, 5, and 6 against Esmil Rogers, who's been staked to a 2 0 lead. Brandon McCarthy had retired the first four he faced, then a single, a double, and triple for the Blue Jays in the top of the second. High bouncer to Ryan Goins at second. And Rogers has set down the first four he's faced. Great seats right behind home plate here at Chase Field. Come on down and think about season tickets for 2014. Enjoy Diamondbacks baseball, air-conditioned comfort. Prado 289, 13 homers and 72. RBIs. What a season he has had. What a turnaround to his season, too. 72 RBIs, a career high. Two more home runs, and he'll match his career high there. Hey, fans, anytime the D backs score six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. One and one. Six oh two four six two forty six hundred. That's the number to call to book the batter's box suite here at Chase Field. Ask about season tickets. Or visit section one eleven here, season ticket headquarters at Chase Field. Rogers drops that one in there. It's two and two. So Martin Prado and the Gerardo Parra driving Jody Jackson to work on the 10th inning. They left Jody standing by uh, the side of the road. This guy will not stop hitting. Kevin Pilar fields that one. Another base hit for Martin Prado. I'll have what he's having. I'm telling you, I was just thinking the same thing. If I was playing for the Diamondbacks right now as an offensive player, I would follow him around and do whatever he does all day long. I mean, just squaring the ball up no matter where he hits it. Line drives all over the field. That ball has to look like a beach ball coming in there to Martin Prado right now. Everything is barreled up. It's yeah. amazing. Well, occasionally guys put together these runs where they hit in, you know, 30 out of 33, whatever it is. There's a couple of bloops and bleeders in there. Not with Martin Prado. Gerardo Parra. Goins. Reyes. And Canacion. They roll the double play, and that ends the inning. We are through two at Chase Field. D-backs trail it 2-0.
Diamond Vents. And by Jack in the Box. Go big at a participating Jack in the Box with Jack's really big chicken sandwich combos for only $3.99 plus tax. Third inning, Labor Day at Chase Field. Blue Jays lead the Diamondbacks 2-0 in the series opener. First to three against Toronto. And then the D-backs hit the road. Life of the NLS. The Goldie T-shirts in place right in the batter's box suite. And set for the top of the Toronto order, Jose Reyes, Ryan Goins, and Edwin Encarnacion. Reyes flying out to right his first time. Former Met and Marlins great. There's a high chopper. Prado's been busy over there. Quickly one out here in the third. I always like watching Jose Reyes, Bob. He's a guy that always, and in talking to him, you, you get the same vibe as well. He always plays with a great joy and passion for the game. You might not always like the antics, uh, but he, he has a genuine enthusiasm and love of just playing baseball. That's the way it, it seems to me. Uh, and there's a lot of guys in the game that have that same joy, and uh, it, it shows. You can tell he's having fun out there. He's doing what he wants to do at the highest level, and he's been pretty good at it for a long time. Ryan Goins grounded out his first time, 0 for 1. Driven to center, Tony Campana. I tell you what, uh, the Blue Jays are centering up some of these and driving the ball to center field. Yeah, it looks like uh, by intent they're trying to drive the ball from gap to gap, stay up the middle of the field. Uh, yeah, normally that's the approach you take with a guy that throws a lot of change-ups, a lot of splitters, a lot of off-speed pitches to go along with the fastball. You don't want to get too far out in front of that off-speed delivery, but Blue Jays, for whatever reason, a lot of balls hit to the middle of the field already. And now the shift is on again for Edwin Encarnacion. Not something we see a lot of, and he hits right into it down the line and just pulls it foul. So often we see these types of defensive shifts for left-hand hitters, but to Encarnacion, a lot of power from that right-hand side, and the Diamondbacks have three infielders on the left-hand side of the infield. And you've got Goldie all by his lonesome almost at second base. McCarthy getting out ahead early in counts. So on one here. Wow. Right on the elbow guard. That sounded like it hit bad. Must be one of those uh, Kevlar uh, elbow guards for Encarnacion. Broken bats don't sound that loud. Right on there. Wow. Oof. That's an aspect of the game that's really changed, and I know once again I'll be accused of being a crusty old timer, but uh, you could clearly see Encarnacion was not in any big rush to get out of the way of that inside pitch. Just, hey, I've got this guard on my elbow. I'll just take it off my arm and head on down to first. High chopper up the middle, Pennington. Step on second to get the force on Encarnacion, and that ends the inning. They strand the hit batter. It's 2-0 Toronto.
pitch for uh, for lefties so he can get into them and 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 he likes to throw it to righties uh, because it's u usually been good in the past uh, but when he's flat you know that's the ball he's getting hit a lot especially against righties so. and that was the comment from Will Nieves on the cutter our Geico quote of the game Kirk Gibson has made it clear that he likes the sinker better than the cutter but certainly Will Nieves monitoring that hoping it can be an effective pitch guys a one two three inning in the first and third for Brandon but in the second we saw Sierra and Ghost Bob have pretty good success I'm not sure if those were off the cutter but it looks like he's getting hit hard at times. Yeah, that cutter to a left-handed hitter, many times the hitter will jam himself. He sees the pitch, he recognizes fastball, he starts his swing, and then that cutter has just enough late movement in uh, to take the ball off the sweet spot of the bat and get it down near the trademark or the handle and get some weak contact. On righties, many times that cutter, however, uh, strays out there over the plate where they get full extension and hit the ball hard. And the cutter, you know, for me, is it's the same plane pitch. It stays on the same plane. It's very flat. It has movement similar to a slider away from a right-handed hitter, but it's very flat. At least the sinker has some downward movement. You get a little movement in, you get a little movement down. Better chance of a batter mishitting the sinker, in my estimation, than mishitting the cutter. The Evis grounds out to Reyes. Here's Cliff Pennington. Bunts it foul. Blue Jays are in town. And <laughs> the hockey gear is in place for the ball game. If they jump over the railing for a shift, then we'll know something's That's up. It's not the Hanson brothers, is it? No aluminum foil on their <laughs> knuckles. I think we're all right. I'm listening to the song. <laughs> They got their elbow guards on too. <laughs> Shoulder pads and everything. They can't be comfortable. <laughs> Looks like the penalty box at a minor league hockey game. You go to the box and you feel shame and then you are free. That's. I got slap shot as at least top three all time sports players. Top three. Dude on the right even had a Chiefs jersey. Wasn't that the name of the team in Slap yeah, Syracuse yeah. Chiefs? Yeah. The Cinderella story of the Federal League. Yellowhead Chiefs in this case. Yeah, there you go. What, what, what's funny is they didn't actually even bother to take the protective eye shields off. They're watching <laughs> the game through the shields. One guy <laughs> did. Kind of old time <laughs> hockey, Eddie Shore. I, I'm amazed at. Uh, Todd Walsh hasn't gone down there to check those guys out. That's right in Todd's wheelhouse. Cliff Pennington has worked at full against Esmil Rogers. One hit for the Diamondbacks so far. One out single by Prado in the second. Look, Pennington hasn't played a lot lately. Funny, the shortstop job seems to kind of go in shifts for a while. Didi Gregorius was playing all the time. And then the Pennington was playing all the time. Then it was Didi a lot. And now Willie is back as well. well. Look at the little girl in the foreground there. She's the right-handed mirror image of Cliff Pennington there. Trying to get her timing down. Goins. Two up, two down in the third. Here's Brandon McCarthy. One thing, Bob, I know you've always talked about and getting back to the discussion about the cutter was a, it seems to oftentimes, not all the time, but have a negative impact on your other pitches. Yeah, and, and guys tend to, and we use this phrase a lot, they fall in love with the cutter. They have a, some initial success with it and think, man, you know, Jam that left-handed hitter. I got that righty out there on the end of the bat. And they start throwing it more and more and more at the expense of their bread and butter pitches. In Brandon McCarthy's case, the sinker, 
A breaking pitch, a change up. All of a sudden, the cutter becomes the primary pitch. And as I said a moment ago, for me, it's a pitch that is much easier to make a mistake with, uh, especially for Brandon McCarthy, other than his other pitches. Another example might be Trevor Cahill. He seemed to have issues with his two-seamer once mm-hmm. he got cutter happy a little bit there. I always felt, uh, and once again, this is just my opinion, a lot of pitching coaches love that cutter. A lot of pitchers love the cutter, but I always felt it was best used as a complimentary pitch when you get in a situation where a batter has fouled off everything you've thrown up there, fouled off your sinker, fouled off your changeup. Well, he hasn't seen the cutter yet. I'll scoot one out there on the outside corner and see if I can't get him to chase a pitch he hasn't seen yet. In that respect, I think it's a, it is a valuable addition to your arsenal, but when you start throwing it, 60, 70, 80 percent of the time, uh, it's it's going to invariably take away from your best stuff. Unless you're Mariano Rivera. Called strike three. That's the first strikeout for Esmil Rogers. We are through three. Diamondbacks trail it two nothing. order in uh, you see him shaving the handle there getting some of that uh, very slippery shiny finish off the handle of the bat so he can uh, put some pine tar and rosin on there get it ready for his next game action if you can uh, as we pull out here a little bit you see he's already done two bats leaning up against the fence there he's got one more to go after this one gotta have something to do to burn off that energy on a day you don't play don't forget Miguel Montero bobblehead day coming up here September 14th. Come early for the Hispanic Heritage Day and Street Festival outside Chase Field. 602-462-4600. Make sure you get your tickets for September 14th. And don't miss out on your Miguel Montero bobblehead. Hispanic Heritage Day Street Festival presented by APS. Before the game, have music, food trucks, Lucha Libre wrestling, the whole thing. So call up 602-462-4600 or... Log on to dbacks.com slash tickets. Another reason to become a Diamondback season ticket holder. Guarantee your seats. Guarantee your Miggy bobblehead. Get into the ballpark early. No waiting in line. Lines on Goldie bobblehead day. We're around the block here at Chase Field. And we've got our Miguel Montero bobblehead up in the booth. And it's a place of honor. Moises Sierra, the right fielder, leads off the fourth. And I still think this is one of the better looking bobbleheads that we've uh, come up with. I like the black jersey, Los D backs on the front. Yeah. Look at that. Cal Montero. Whoa. Man down. <laughs> <laughs> he did go, says Greg Gibson at first. And that's the first strikeout for Brandon McCarthy. One down in the fourth. Catcher, Josh Tolley. 
Back with you tomorrow on Fox Sports Arizona. Night game tomorrow. Pre-game show. Diamondbacks live at 6 o'clock. That'll be Todd Redmond versus Wade Miley. Then another day game on Wednesday. It's a getaway day for the Diamondbacks, so we'll be here late. Extra innings. Mark Burley and Randall Delgado on Wednesday afternoon. Josh Tolley grounded out his first time. I what Brandon McCarthy, I know he had some trouble in that second inning, but he's thrown 34 pitches, 25 for strikes. Well, and these Blue Jays hitters have been very aggressive against Brandon McCarthy. A lot of early count swinging. See only that second inning with the 15 pitch. Otherwise, he has been very efficient. And 15 pitches for one inning is not bad. Major League average is right around 16, 16 and a half pitches per inning. Blue Jays had a single, a double, and a triple in that second. A couple of balls hit to deep off the wall in center field. Two and two. Josh Tolley has developed into something of a personal catcher for R.A. Dickey, who is not pitching in this series, but J.P. Aaron Cedia, who is the number one catcher, has been scuffling a little bit, especially since the All-Star break. There is a R.A. Dickey, former Cy Young winner, and met great. And so he and Tolley have worked together. Of course, when you're catching a knuckleball, that's a whole different. Well, I was just thinking the same thing. Your defensive numbers are going to take a beating. <laughs> Paul Goldschmidt, little backhander. McCarthy covers. Two outs. Were you a knuckleball? Could you handle any of those guys? I, I never had to catch a legitimate knuckleball pitcher. There were some guys that kind of fooled around with it in the bullpen from time to time, but I never really caught a guy who relied on the knuckleball as his number one pitch. Probably better off. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously it's very hard to hit, and it's equally as tough to catch. Speaking of knucklers, yeah. there is our fantasy football commissioner, Tom Candiotti, after his uh, dreadful performance last night in the draft. Focused. Leo Gilmartin overseeing. Leo had the number one pick, by the way. He went with Adrian Peterson. I thought he was going to take an offensive lineman. He was talked out of it. <laughs> Candy actually was trying to talk him into taking an offensive lineman. That's the kind of commissioner he is. Candy has already offered several ridiculous trades. And the trash talking is underway. Kevin Pilar singled and scored a run his first time. Of course, Ari Dickey's knuckleball is a little harder. That's what makes his knuckleball unique. How about that? Win. Diamondbacks win. It's like a Times Square. That's pretty cool. I'm not. He's got it resting on the young man's head. Can't quite. It's not exactly most. He may be more uncomfortable than those hockey guys. Really, Dad? No, I'll just rest it on your head for nine innings. You'll be fine. It's working out. Or these guys. The Hanson brother. Oh, Jody Jackson is uh, on the scene. By the way, I, I was uh, corrected on the Twitter. I'm kind of embarrassed about this. It was the Charlestown Chiefs, not the Syracuse. Oh. Syracuse Chiefs are a baseball team, or were, right? Yeah. Still are. The Charlestown Chiefs, the Cinderella story of the Federal League. Three and two to Kevin Pilar. Jody will be talking to the Hanson brothers when we come back. I remember there was the two guys uh, about three or four years ago. I don't know if you ever saw this. The, the two guys from Toronto who would sit behind home plate dressed in full umpire regalia. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. mimic every single call for the entire game. I did see some of that. And then they took their act on the road and went to all these ballparks all over the country. <laughs> Martin Prado. Brandon McCarthy works a one, two, three, fourth. Century Lake Yerling to what's next. An interview with the Hanson brothers. Plus Adam Eaton, so a whole lot in store for you after this.
I sort of feel like I am in a hockey dressing room right now. Matt, Jordan, Bryn, and Kelby. I'm Jody Jackson, and of course the Blue Jays in town, you guys representing Manitoba and Saskatchewan, right? I mean, you brought every piece of equipment possible here. Are you going to go play a game right after this, or is this just part of the effect? No, no, just for fun. Yeah, jump in the pool after this. Jump in the pool, really? Is that the plan? Well, hey. we, don't, we don't get stuff like this in Canada, so you got to make the most of it while you're here. Now, seriously, though, guys, you guys play for the Phoenix Knights, right? Tell me a little bit more about, uh, and you got the Blue Jays jersey, I like that. Tell me a little bit more about your career aspirations. Uh, well, we'd like to be the best we can be to get a scholarship, hopefully, after Junior's done. And I don't know, we're just trying to live the dream while we're here and have as much fun as possible. Junior A hockey, so you guys live nearby. Is Mesa is where you guys live right now? I live in Gilbert right, yeah, Gilbert yeah, right now. Gilbert pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So you saw the Blue Jays were coming, and I noticed you guys have been kind of communicating with the bullpen. How's, how's that going? Well, every time we chat, they're, they're noticing and they can hear us. So they, I think they enjoy it to have the away fans at the at away game. Yeah, it's, it's sweet. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. You got every, I mean, seriously, there are bags. I couldn't even get in here. If we didn't have a roof on this ballpark, though, I'm wondering, I'd would you be die. wearing this? No, I'd probably die. <laughs> Kelby, how are you feeling about that? I'm really hot right now. I, yeah, it's a struggle to sit here, but it's a good time for sure. Did you bring your skates too? Or? Okay, everything but the skates, but you've got the gloves. I mean, you got it all going on here. And, and have you guys been, uh, obviously hockey's your passion, baseball fans too? I'm a huge baseball fan in Canada. I watch every single Jays game I can. I, I can tell you every player, I, I just love the Blue Jays. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big baseball fan. And the reason why, you know, Steve Ruthie and Bob Brenly have referred to you guys as the Handsome Brothers, well, you have the Chiefs jersey on yeah, here, Matt. Geez. It's just a homemade we're a home team in uh, Manitoba, so, but some relations to the Chiefs, I guess, yeah. <laughs> All right. What's the reaction been from the crowd around here? Are they kind of like looking at you guys fun? Pretty good, yeah, pretty good. Everybody's getting into the chance and, yeah, a few pictures. It's been, it's been good. All right. Okay, since you're here, okay, we have to ask you one more question. It's our Twitter poll brought to you by AT&T and, and Bill Cochran. I'll need a little more help. Best Canadian musician, Neil Young, Brian Adams, Rush, or Justin Bieber, Neil anyone Young. want to wait? Neil, Neil Young for me. The I'd say Biebs for sure. Bob Brenly, we got a Neil Young fan here. What else? Justin Bieber. I'd, definitely. Say, I'd say Rush. They're pretty good. So we're kind of all over the map on that one, guys. So that's what we have for you. We'll send it back. We have a little bit more info now about these young men dressed out in the full hockey gear. Jody, thanks very much. Uh, two votes for the Biebs there, BB. Ooh, that's scary. Kind of. Adam Eaton up the middle, race. Two up, two down in the bottom of the fourth. Those guys are styling. I like it. Big baseball fans, hockey players. Take some dedication to wear that hockey gear to a baseball game. I mean, uh, I've never really played hockey, but I know they wear a lot of equipment. That's got to be heavy oh, and hot. There is nothing on this earth that smells worse than Ooh. a hockey locker room. Ooh. You go in there, those guys... Skate and sweat with all that padding under there. It is whew, rank. Here's Goldie. The MVP chant starts. And if you're sabermetrically inclined, our somewhat unreliable staff did a little research project earlier and looked at all the sabermetric categories that uh, Paul Goldschmidt leads in. And uh, there's a lot. OPS plus, win probability, win probability added. Third in war. Yeah, I'm not even sure what some of these sabermetric categories are, but Paul Goldschmidt leads in a lot of them. That's all you need to know. <laughs> vote early, vote often. One and two. Vorp. He's second in Vorp. Second in Vorp. Weighted on base average. He's third. R-E-W. He's first, whatever that is. <laughs> that was Michael Stipe, wasn't it? I think we're just making things up now. Saw it a couple of times and missed. It's full three and two. RE24. I knew he led in that. That's easy. You know, whatever that is. RE24, that's a, a chemical they put in the, the preservative. <laughs> it's an think, additive, right? yeah. 
you put in your food. Three and two. Drives that one down the line and left. Oh. Missed it by that much. Judging from the location of the pitch and the fact it was an off speed delivery, I didn't think that one was going to be able to stay fair. Just enough hook to put it on the wrong side of the foul pole down there in the D backs bullpen. A reminder every time a Diamondback player does hit a home run this season, Fulton Holmes donates $150 to Central Arizona Mountain Rescue. 44 Carrot Goldie. That one is bounced. Foul. He'll do it again on three and two. Well, Paul Goldschmidt has shown just a tremendous ability, and I, I don't know how you quantify this. I mean, we've got the numbers right here, but uh, he goes from an 0-2 or a 1-2 count. So he's behind. No balls, two strikes, one ball, two strikes, to 3-2. and two. He's done it 46 times this season. And in uh, those at-bats, he's reached base 24 times. So... Pitcher had him in on the ropes at 0 and 2 or 1 and 2, and Goldie ended up reaching base 24 times. Did it again. Foul. I think Rogers should probably stop throwing that pitch. Yeah, maybe. Not fooling him. Goldie's first in the majors in Yabba Dabba Do. That's a fair ball. Laurie at third. Rogers has now set down the last 70s face. The Hansons in the house. We are through four. It's 2 nothing Toronto. Chase Field on Labor Day here in downtown Phoenix. Diamondbacks trail the Blue Jays 2 0. Hey, fans, coming up Sunday, new and uh, final new episode of the season for a Cup of Coffee. Aaron Hill, former Blue Jays great, talks to, well, he talks to me about his concussion diagnosis that almost ended his career and why he's not on the Twitter. But that could change. Cup of Coffee with Aaron Hill. It uh, premieres Sunday, 4 o'clock and 10 o'clock right here on Fox Sports Arizona. Thanks to Aaron for. His efforts to help us out with that down at Chloe's Corner here in downtown Phoenix. Great spot for lunch. That's where we film all the episodes. Anthony Ghost, RBI triple his first time. Ghost Rogers Reyes, 8 9 and 1 here in the Toronto fifth against Brandon McCarthy. Punted that one just a little firm up that first baseline as it rolls down near the bullpen in right field. Wayne Murphy, the first base coach, almost fielding that one. Former Diamondback coach. Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't recognize Murphy. He's got some new knees. He's no longer bow legged. <laughs> he used to be able to walk over a fire hydrant. <laughs> Not anymore, huh? Not anymore. Oh, wow. Got him straightened out. He's taller now. <laughs> Boy, Murph was a great hitting coach for me here back in the early 2000s with the D-backs. He was one of the holdover coaches from the previous regime under Buck Showalter. Boy, he just had such a calming way of working with hitters. There was never any panic. There was never any reason for undue concern. You guys are good enough to be here. You're a good enough hitter to succeed at this level. Let's just tighten things up a little bit. Penny! Greg Gibson at first. They'd like a word. Yeah, there was the slightest bit of hesitation there on the part of Greg Gibson, the first base umpire. Nice play by Penny. Ooh. Yikes. I mean, he knows he has to hurry because Ghost can really fly down that line. Yeah, may have caught in a break right there. John Gibbons uh, pointing that out, actually. Nice play by Cliff Pennington. They get the speedy ghosts in theory. And here's Esmil Rogers who grounded out his first time. Cliff Pennington can play shortstop with anybody. Yeah, we've watched him all year long and talk about the list of great defensive shortstops in this game. And I guarantee you Cliff will not be on the list just because he gets overlooked. But he, he makes every play and he makes a lot he shouldn't. I was thinking in past eras in this game when it was commonplace, you build up the middle of the field. Catcher, second base, shortstop, center field. Those guys' primary concern was defense. You got your power and your offense from your corner infield, corner outfield spots. Cliff Pennington would have been a perfect fit for the Baltimore Orioles under Earl Weaver. Hmm. You know, you had Mark Belanger all those years, a guy that couldn't hit the ball out of his own shadow, but he caught everything that came his direction. We had Paul Blair in center, then later Al Bumbry. Jose Reyes 0 for 2. All right to Goldie. Seven straight set down by Brandon McCarthy. Diamondbacks down 2 nothing. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Buy Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. 
Bottom five at Chase Field. Diamondbacks with only one hit so far against Esmil Rogers. The Martin Prado single back in the second. Rogers has retired the last seven Diamondbacks he's faced. He'll work to Eric Chavez, Martin Prado, and Gerardo Parra, four, five, and six in the Arizona fifth. Chavez grounded out his first time. Lifted in the air to left, Kevin Pilar. Boy, so far, Rogers, a uh, perfect illustration of how to pitch to weak contact. Only one strikeout in the game, and that was looking by Brandon McCarthy, the opposing pitcher. Everything else has been weak ground balls or lazy fly balls. He's rolling along eight in a row. Here's Prado who has the only diamond back hits. I see some Sedona red back there. And a real coach Jeff has asked me to point out to D back nation right behind home plate. He reached out on the Twitter. So there you go guys real D back nation in the house. Right behind the plate. Thanks for being here on Labor Day spending your time with us. Diamondback have a great community of fans on the Twitter, BB. They're real D-back nation, D-backs fans. Snake, uh, snake pit. Yeah, I get a look at the snake pit from time to time. Yeah. What do you got? Well, I mean, I just, you know, like to check it out every now and then. They keep up with all the minor leagues, what's going on at the various affiliates. They really do do a great job yeah. with all the minor league teams. Oh, pretty backhander by Reyes and a strong throw. That was a nice play. He just made the backhand stop, kind of took a beat there, set himself, and then fired. Watch the little pause here. Yeah, ball was hit hard. Hard two hopper right there. That's the little showmanship. You talked, he's a little bit flashy out there from time to time, but he knew he had plenty of time because the ball was hit so hard, and he's got a strong, accurate throwing arm. That's uh, an easy play for a shortstop like Jose Reyes. I got 11 ground ball outs for Rogers. Ronald Parra hit into a double play his first time up. Yeah, azsnakepit.com if you want to follow, you know, places what's going on in South Bend and Missoula and different places like that. They do great work analyzing all the minor league guys in the D back system, even at the very lowest level. So you great way to familiarize yourself with guys coming up. Yeah, and, you know. People that uh, have a similar interest in the game as you. If you're a D-backs fan, that's the place to be. I talked to Jim McLennan, actually, in spring training. He runs the site. I talked to a little Premier League. Mostly Diamondbacks. Gerardo Parra, 10 for his last 32 coming into today. That's 313, a homer and nine RBIs. Nine driven in in his previous seven games. Diamondbacks looking for a two-on base runner here. He did not go, says Hunter Wendell stand at third. Ramtrucks.com pool area. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Great place to watch a game. Your holiday floating in the pool watching a ball game. What could be better than that? And a beverage in the pool at a ball game. <laughs> yeah, I think the guy on the right in the pool there is probably from Canada. What what gives that away? I don't think the sun has touched his skin in years. He's uh, straight here from Yellowknife. <laughs> Just got off the set of Ice Road Truckers. <laughs> Yeah, which one of those guys is from Arizona? Uh, the guy on the right. No? What do you mean? 
<laughs> two and two. Just stays alive. I used to watch Ice Road Truckers a lot. I got into that. Yeah. Ever watch that show? I've seen it a few times. But yeah. the problem with Ice Road Truckers was they'd always try to, you know, they wanted to take a commercial break. They want you to stick around. Oh, so yeah. they have a shot of a panicked truck driver making a turn. Cliffhanger. Yeah. Will Bill make the turn or will he wipe out? <laughs> Find out after this. And then you come back and, uh, yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Yeah. He's still driving. Mama D back. Dad a Blue Jay. I'm just a mixed up kid. Well, aren't we all? <laughs> Two and two. Swing and a miss. Just the second strikeout for Esmil Rogers, who has now retired 10 in a row. We're through five at Chase Field. The 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Arizona Diamondbacks regular season home game. Not a whole lot of offense here this afternoon at Chase Field as Mill Rogers has retired 10 straight, seven in a row for Brandon McCarthy as we open the sixth. Ryan Goins, Edwin Encarnacion, and Brett Laurie, two, three, and four for the Blue Jays who lead it to nothing. Boy, and here's an oddity. We're through five full innings in this ball game, and the Diamondbacks have swung and missed at Rogers once. The strike three pitch to Gerardo Parr was the first time a Diamondbacks hitter swung at one of his pitches and did not make some kind of contact. He's got only two strikeouts. First one was McCarthy looking. So what, does that tell you anything about his stuff? Well, you know, we mentioned uh, the, the weak contact must have just enough late movement. Uh, Diamondbacks hitters feel like they're getting good looks and good swings, making contact, but not good contact. That one is driven to the gap in right center. Gerardo Parra! Contact night. Not quite good enough there. It's our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. Nice running, tumbling catch that time by Parra. Made a little tougher because the center fielder, Tony Campana, has such good speed. When you have speedy outfielders that think they should catch every ball hit in their area, it gets a little dicey when you have those tweeners. That time Parra took charge and made a nice catch. The left-hand side of the field shift is back on for Edwin Encarnacion, who was hit by a pitch in the elbow guard his last time up. See Paul Goldschmidt all by himself over there near first, halfway between first and second, and you've got Chavez, Pennington, Prado. Prado, the second baseman, playing where the shortstop would normally be. And Campana in center field, shaded over toward the gap in left center. On the ground, right to Chavez. Nine straight, retired by McCarthy.
Brandon has not given up a hit since the Blue Jays got three in the second. Yeah, potentially a tough decision coming up in the bottom of the sixth. McCarthy spot due up third for the Diamondbacks, and if Nieves or Pennington or both would happen to reach, uh, you have to think about scoring some runs in this game to get back in it. As good as McCarthy has been since that second inning, you still have to score some runs to get back in the game. Mid-game Zumba class appears to be in effect in the Diamondback bullpen. Here's Lori. Brandon McCarthy jumping out ahead 0 and 2 here 62 pitches 44 for strikes. And he is getting ahead in counts and staying ahead 19 of 22 nice. It's from the Patrick Corbin playbook. Right back at you. Rogers has set down 10 in a row. McCarthy has retired 10 straight. It's 2 nothing at Chase Field. Shot of the Valley here on Labor Day. Leads nicely into our Chevron next game matchup. Back with you tomorrow. It's a night game at Chase Field. Then a day game on Wednesday, getaway day. Tomorrow night on Fox Sports Arizona, Todd Redman and Wade Miley. Yeah, we've seen a, quite a pitcher's duel here with uh, Esmil Rogers and Brandon McCarthy. Each pitcher has retired 10 in a row. Three hits for the Blue Jays, only one for the Diamondbacks. Martin Prado single back in the second. And that, in fact, was the last Diamondback base runner. And Gibby has moved over. The managerial dugout shift is on, looking for <laughs> offense down there. And Will Nieves will lead it off in the sixth. Will ground the to short his first time up. Nieves, Pennington, and McCarthy in the sixth. As Neil Rogers has spread it around, a lot of ground ball outs, only a couple fly balls. It's funny, Bob, the Diamondbacks have never really had trouble this year with aces of staffs. We've seen the D-backs handle those guys, but lately you're... You're talking about Robbie Erlin and Yasmero Petit and now Esmeal Rogers. These are the guys that have given the Diamondbacks issues. I think some of that, that just has to do with familiarity. When you see the Roy Hallidays and Cliff Lees of the world enough, uh, and then you slide a, a fifth starter in there that's just called up from the minor leagues. Uh, we just saw the Giants. Obviously, they've seen a lot of Tim Lincecum. Yeah, but they hadn't seen quite as much as Yasmero Petit. And uh, Petit pitched a gem in that ball game yesterday. 
Yeah, even though, though the guys have the reputation of being premier starters in the game, if you have a good idea of what they're going to try to do, uh, you feel like you have a little better game plan against them. But when you don't know anything about the pitcher out there on the mound, uh, it's just a guessing game. Boy, he will only have his guess wrong there out in front of that one for the strikeout. Third of the game for Rogers. Here's Cliff Pennington. Cliff has to get new walk-up music. I can't take it anymore. He's had the same song since day one. Usually guys mix it up or they have two, they alternate. Cliff uh, has been riding that horse since opening day. <laughs> I have to talk to him about that. A little blooper in the left. Pilar tracks it down, two outs. And McCarthy will hit here with uh, two outs and nobody on. Yeah, no decision to be made here in this inning. If you're looking for a silver lining of the 69 wins the Diamondbacks have this year, 38 of those have been come from behind victories. That's 55 percent, the third highest percentage in the majors. Comeback victories. Well, let's see if uh, it can start right here with Brandon McCarthy, who uh, steps in 0 for 25 on the season. Still looking for his first hit. There you go, BB. Yeah. The White Sox. Uh, Paul Canerco, by the way, homered today for the White Sox. I think he passed Cal Ripken on the all-time list. See if we can get our unreliable staff to check that out. I'm a, I'm a Paul Canerco guy. He's, for me, is the most underrated hitter of his generation. I would tend to agree with you. A lot of other guys you might list before Paul Canerco. Fourth strikeout for Esmiel Rogers, who has set down the last 13 he's faced. He's got a 2 nothing lead through six. out there wearing the hockey gear. They inspire our AT&T Twitter poll. Best Canadian musician. Those guys weighed in. Two of four of them visited, uh, voted for Justin Bieber. And apparently you, the viewer, you have weighed in and it is Biebs, guys. I don't know. No doubt about it. It's the Bieber. Bob, I don't know. We, a write-in vote, by the way, for Tragically Hit from our own Todd Walsh. We live in a world where Justin Bieber just outvoted Rush and Neil Young. Uh, we live in a world where Justin Bieber is considered a musician. <laughs> no love for the Beeps. <laughs> I think it's artist. Artist. Okay. It? Well, we have to reword the question. <laughs> well, Brandon McCarthy has been painting. Those five home starts looking good. And he's retired the last 10 he's faced. He'll work to Moises Sierra, Josh Tolley, and Kevin Pilar, 5, 6, and 7. In the Toronto 7th. And just like Rogers, yeah. he has kept the ball on the ground. And that's always been the model for Brandon McCarthy. He's a big BAPIP and ground ball percentage guy.
Rodgers is his counterpart has faced the minimum here through six. You know, partner, I've been asked a lot of times, who's the best pitcher you ever caught? Who had the best stuff? And for a long time, I overlooked this guy because I didn't really catch him that much, but I was on the Blue Jays in 89. Dave Steeb might have had the filthiest stuff I ever saw. I mean, he had a tremendous fastball with a lot of tailing action through a curve and a slider. Both were just off the charts. I was looking at some numbers. I remembered uh, vaguely that he had had a run at the end of one season that was nearly unprecedented. And it was the 1988 season. His last three starts of the season, all complete games. He went nine innings, gave up four hits of shutout ball against the Indians, came back against the Indians the next time out, eight and two-thirds of no-hit ball before giving up his first hit in the game. No runs, obviously, in that game. And then he finished the season against the Orioles with another nine-inning, one-hit performance when he gave up the one hit with eight and two-thirds again. <laughs> now, that's pretty good. That's a great way to finish the 88 season. He comes back to start the 89 season. His first two starts, he went 17 innings, gave up five hits and one run. So if you combine those five starts, that one stretch for Dave Steeb, 44 innings, 11 hits, one run. There's the strikeouts. Just the second for Brandon McCarthy. Two down. You had Dave Steve on some of those teams, and later Jack Morris was a Blue Jay. There's Jack working the radio side for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Dave he, Steve was kind of a mean guy, oh, too, wasn't yeah, he? Oh, yeah, yeah. He would hit you in the ribs just to, for looking at him wrong, but... Uh, I mean, he would throw sliders to established, experienced major league right-handed hitters, and they would fall on their back in the batter's box, and the pitch would end up on the outside corner for a called strike. Oof. Yeah, he had that that edge that what takes guys with that kind of stuff and t takes them from good to great, yep. that kind of don't-you-dare-cross-me killer instinct. Mm-hmm. Eric Chavez one more time. We start that way. We end that way in the top of the seventh. Brandon McCarthy has set down the last 13 Blue Jays. He has faced, but he trails it 2 nothing. Face the minimum through six, and Brandon McCarthy has faced uh, retired his last 13 straight. He's given up only three hits, so it's a two-nothing pitcher's duel. Only four hits in the ball game, and 
When we need offense, we go to the bullpen for Joe Borowski. We, we need some hits out of you here. Well, it's worked in the past. Why not work again right now? Uh, how about this one? It's interesting, Joe, because as we've documented, both these guys just one ground ball after another here. You know what they're doing, Steve? They're working ahead. They are really pounding the strike zone, getting ahead early, and they're making quality pitches with all of their pitches. A lot of ground ball outs for McCarthy and Rogers. Campana, Eaton, Goldschmidt, top of the order here in the bottom of the seventh. I tell you that Camp Campana had grounded out his first two at bats, but uh, basically everybody has. Only one hit for the Diamondbacks. Martin Prado's one out single back in the second. And he has been the last Diamondback base runner against Esmeal Rogers, who's behind here, three and one, to lead off the seventh. Regardless of what happens, Joe, this is another giant step forward for Brandon McCarthy, it would seem. It really is. He, he, his last outing in this one so far, he has looked really sharp. All of his pitches working, and he's doing a great job of locating in and out, and he's keeping the ball down real good. Tremendously efficient, a lot of strikes. And that's a part of his game. He's got a pitch to, to contact. And, and if you can get a guy out, my philosophy is get, try and get a guy out in three pitches or less. You're, more, you're less likely to make mistakes when you don't get too deep in counts. And he's been doing a great job of it today. And your defense stays on sure. their toes. They know Absolutely. they're going to be busy. Joe will be with uh, Jody Jackson, Todd Walsh, Diamondback Live, following the game. Rogers at 77 pitches, 50 for strikes. First Diamondback base runner since the second inning. And the D-backs have the leadoff man on in the seventh. And Joe, so far so good. Just what the doctor orders. Bring Borowski <laughs> in and you, and you start to get some guys on the bases. The question is, uh, with Tony, will, will he be running? We have not seen him or Adam Eaton, for that matter, take off a whole lot lately. I think given the lack of offense, you've got to take advantage of every base runner, and that's uh, one of Tony Campana's calling cards, his ability to steal his way into scoring position. Josh Tolley behind the plate has only thrown out 17% of the opposing base stealers this year. There goes Tony Campana. Tolley throws. Safe. Sixth stolen base for Campana. Pitch to handle for Tolley. Got rid of it quickly. Strong throw. Just can't ban it. Too much speed. Looked like he was able to get his hand just in underneath the tag of Reyes down there at second base. Boy, a very close play. Yeah, that's one of those ones. The difference in that play was the fact that Reyes caught the ball up in front of the bag instead of letting it travel another 8 to 10 inches to the bag. They may have had a chance to get Campana there. Diamondbacks have a runner in scoring position for the first time in the ball game. If he catches that ball directly in front of the bag, you can see by the time he gets the tag down on Tony's shoulder, his hand is on the base. 0-1-1 to Adam Eaton. Now, Joe, how does this change thing for Rogers, who has uh, been pitching from the windup since the start of the third inning? That's the whole thing with, with his struggles this year. He really hasn't had to pitch in any pres pressure situations today. So... Diamondbacks now have them going out of the stretch. Now they might want to start doing the little things, make, make guys move a little bit. Try and get him out of that comfort zone he's in right now. This is Pete Walker, the pitching coach. Well, you can't get any more comfortable than 13 in a row retired, that's for sure. And Diamondbacks trying to make him a little less comfortable here with Campana on second and a one and one count to Adam Eaton. You know, Joe, we were just talking a moment ago about uh, try to end in a bat in three pitches or less. 15 of the 21 outs that McCarthy has recorded today, three pitches or fewer. And that just is a testament to the amount of strikes he's throwing early in the count. First pitch strikes are huge. It changes it. It changes in that bat completely. He's changed his sign from D backs win to Homer. <laughs> 
Two and two. Well, you saw Sergio Santos warming up in the Blue Jays bullpen. Uh, I think John Gibbons realizes uh, he's gotten a lot more out of Esmeal Rogers than he expected today. He's probably not going to push the envelope too much. And you see the base runners definitely got him out of his, his his rhythm a little bit stepping off a lot having to check him constantly. Late swing there by Eaton it's in the dirt totally completes the strikeout that's five. For Rogers and the funny thing about Rogers here today go back over his last nine starts opponents had hit 345 against him. And the Diamondbacks here through six and a third have only one hit. And that's going to do it. Goldie in the batter's box. John Gibbons to the mound. Pitching change. Chase Field don't go anywhere. Tying run at the plate here in the seventh. Campana the runner at second base only one hit through six and a third and he'll give way to a former Diamondback draftee this is Sergio Santos who just back from medical rehab with AAA Buffalo he was activated from the 60 day DL at the uh, start of August after a right tricep strain so he's uh, making only his 18th appearance this year that yeah, was a first round pick back in the 0 2 draft the 27th overall pick Signed as a shortstop, worked his way through the Diamondbacks minor league system. Uh, was traded to the Toronto Blue Jays, tried to work their way through their system. A 248 lifetime minor league hitter. What will that do? That'll send you to the mound. <laughs> Paul Goldschmidt 0 for 2. Campana at second after a walk and a stolen base. Sergio Santos has stranded all 10 runners he has inherited this year. He picks up Campana on second. 1 0 to Goldie. Santos recorded 30 saves a couple of years ago closing out games for the Chicago White Sox recorded 92 strikeouts in 63 and a third innings. And you 
obviously he comes in and, and he's not giving Goldie anything to pitch. And, and as a manager, you're bringing this guy in in this situation to get Goldschmidt out, not necessarily pitch around. He could have left the starter in for that. You want your relievers to come in and throw strikes and get guys out, not to put more guys on base. Especially the tying runs. 3-0. There's the strike, three and one. Paul Goldschmidt has it safely in 11 of his last 14 games. Getting almost 330 over that span. Pretty good track record with runners in scoring position. Here's the three one. Ball four. So the Diamondbacks, who had not had a base runner since Prado's one-out single in the second, get two of the first three to reach in the seventh. And Goldie, we talked about this, Bob, not getting a lot to hit lately. Now most in the National League since August 6th. Joey Votto is second on that list with 24. So here's Saturday's hero, Eric Chavez. Foul, 0 and 1. This was Eric Chavez on throwback night. His first hit since being activated from the DL, and a perfect time for it, scoring Willie Bloomquist with the winning run. John Gibbons has just got to be ecstatic about the outing he got from Rogers today. They've used seven different starters in their last 40 games. Mentioned in the open of the show, they're last or near last in just about every important pitching category in the American League. Dead last in ERA, 13th in homers allowed, slugging percentage, they're 14th in the American League. Not the numbers they were expecting out of this Blue Jays team this year. Of course, we've documented they've had more than their share of injuries to some key people. Rogers' his previous nine starts, the ERA had been seven and a half, so this one kind of came out of nowhere. Two and one. And another runner at second. Goldschmidt at first. Charging the walk off for Shabby that had snapped an 0 for 17 skid. Right back to Santos. For one, double play. Sergio Santos walks Goldschmidt but puts out the fire. Joe, we'll see you on Diamondbacks Live after the game. Thanks. See you then.
sale now. Enjoy exclusive benefits, including postseason priority, a flexible 12-month payment option, and a plan that's just right for you. Don't think you can make all 81 home games? Well, what's wrong with you? Well, then check out a half-season or weekend plan. If you don't want to miss a single moment of baseball, go all in with full-season tickets. Buy or renew your 2014 season tickets and guarantee your postseason priority by calling 602-462-4600 or log on to dbacks.com slash tickets. Brandon McCarthy back out there for the eighth inning. He has given up only three hits, all three Toronto hits coming in the second, and you can see what he's done since then. He has retired the last 13 he's faced. Anthony Ghost leads it off. Ghost had an RBI triple back in that second inning. One pitch. One out. Blue Jays bullpen. Steve Delabar warming, the right-hander. And how about this, Bob? We mentioned that Sergio Santos, drafted by the Diamondbacks, converted from a Position player to a reliever, then a closer with the White Sox. He will hit for himself here. Now, Santos actually had some good seasons in the minor leagues very early on for the Diamondbacks, working his way up through rookie ball and A ball, but uh, and just kind of seemed to hit that wall around the double A, triple A level offensively. Eric Chavez. We were talking to J.P. Ricciardi about Santos when he was originally in the Blue Jays system, and J.P. said they tried to convince him for years to try pitching, and finally it worked out. It worked out really well. He had some good years with the White Sox. I think he's being credited for getting the bat on the ball. For making contact, yeah. <laughs> Not often you see a guy come in, get the final out of the seventh, and then hit in the eighth. Jose Reyes 0 for 3. They don't squander leads. Two and two. Now 80 pitches for Brandon, 55 for strikes. He has been very efficient. And ahead in counts all afternoon. Driven to center field. Tony Campana backing up. And he tracks it down at the wall. 16 straight set down by Brandon McCarthy. It's still 2-0. Looking for some offense. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Coming up for the Diamondbacks. Martin Prado, Gerardo Parra, and Will Nieves.
Well against Brandon McCarthy, but it seems every time they have, they've hit it right at Tony Campana. Yeah, straightaway center field once again. Campana playing shallow. Had a long way to go to catch up to that one. Uses every bit of that long outfielder's glove to make a great running catch straight back to the wall in center field. Well, Sergio Santos hit for himself in the top of the eighth, but on to work the bottom of the eighth for the Blue Jays. Uh, just activated from medical rehab assignment is the big right-hander, Steve Delabar. He's been out for, uh, well, a while, right shoulder inflammation. And he's on here with a 2-0 lead. Prado, Parra, and Nieves, 5-6-7 for the D-backs. Martin Prado has the Diamondbacks only hit today, a one-out single back in the second. That single extended Martin's hit streak to nine games. He has now hit safely in 18 of his last 19. Phone rings in the Diamondback bullpen. Pitcher spot is due up fifth in this inning. Center field, Ghost. Right at him, one away. Yeah, we were talking about Tony Campana and that big old outfielder's glove, uh, and there is a difference. A lot of fans may not realize this is uh, actually a small outfielder's glove, and the outfielders break them in as long as they possibly can. They want a long pocket in the glove. Uh, this is a glove that's more likely to be used at shortstop or third base. It actually fits inside of the outfielder's glove. That's how big these things are that the outfielders use. And Tony needed every bit of it on this one going straight back to center field. Gerardo Parra. Base hit. Just a second hit today for the Diamondbacks. They have a one out base runner in the eighth. Just squeaked it through the left hand side of that infield. Brings up Will Nieves. Will the thrill around here anyway? San Francisco probably not so much. We like one a day, Will. Sometimes two. Roll to second. Goins. Reyes. Encarnacion. That's the double play, and they are through eight with a two nothing lead. Kind of like going to shop class. Yeah, it literally involves tools today. Miguel Montero shaving down the handle of his bat, getting that 
shiny varnish off of there be able to get a better grip. He puts some tape on there to make a nice even line as he paints a white stripe up there near the top of the handle of the bat. Any idea why the paint? No, nah, I'm not really sure why. I mean, obviously, it clearly delineates where the handle in his mind starts and the barrel starts, but uh, I've never seen that particular move before. Well, he's had time, it looks like, today to do four or five of those. As we hit the ninth inning, Brandon McCarthy, what an effort here. He has retired the last 16 in a row. He's given up only three hits, all in the second inning. That's the... Last time the Blue Jays had a base runner was with two outs in the third when Encarnacion was hit by a pitch. Ever since then, it's been 16 in a row set down by Brandon. who will face Goins, Encarnacion, and Lori, two, three, and four here in the ninth. 82 pitches, I'm sorry, Bob, 57 for strikes. So the pitch count, not an issue at this point. Not either. at all. Only two hits for the D-backs today, Para and Prado, and they were both erased on double plays on the next pitch. Para a double play in the second, Nieves a DP in the four in the uh, eighth, and that's been it. D-backs did have two base runners in the seventh on a pair of walks, right in front of Adam Eaton, and Goins has a single to lead off the ninth. That ends the streak of 16 straight set down by McCarthy. First baseman Edwin Encarnacion. And Carnacion. And this time with a runner on first, that changes things. Yeah, they got to modify the shift just a little bit. Martin Prado will cheat up the middle of the field, and Pennington will go over a little bit toward the hole between third and short. But with the runner at first, you got to play a little more traditional. That one is driven high and deep and gone. Edwin Encarnacion, that's 35. And it's a 4 0 Blue Jay lead. a no doubter. Ooh. Now the only shift that would have helped you there is if you pull Gerardo Parra from right field and put him up in the bleachers. <laughs> Wait, can we do that? I don't think so. <laughs> Conference time. That's one way to beat a shift. Just hit it over everybody. So Edwin Encarnacion becomes the fourth player in Blue Jays history to record back-to-back -back seasons of at least 35 homers and 100 RBIs. He joins Carlos Delgado, Jose Bautista, he joined Betts, and Sean Green. And he is behind Chris Davis and Miguel Cabrera on the list of American League home run leaders. Brett Laurie. Encarnacion on Saturday had the 1,000th hit of his career. And now back to back seasons with 35 homers and 100 RBIs. Chavez in third, one away. Hey, fans, keep up with the pennant races. Catch the rest of the 2013 season in glorious HD quality. Spectacular HD. Watch every out-of-market game live on over 350 supported mobile devices. Visit MLB.tv today. Moises Sierra. Sierra doubled and scored in the second. Coming at Greg Schulte, right underneath. Sierra played 49 games with the Blue Jays last season. He had 
261 this year, and Triple A Buffalo pay, played 100 games. A lot of injuries here with the Blue Jays. They've had to go to their bench. So many key guys out. Jose Bautista, Melky Cabrera, Colby Rasmus. On the mound, Josh Johnson, Brandon Morrow. Ricky Romero was a, one of their best pitchers, and he's kind of run into a, a tough time, tough couple of years here, locating, throwing strikes. And he went all in, made that big deal in the offseason with Miami, and... Well, they got Burley, they got Johnson, they got Reyes. Boy, Eric Chavez has had a busy day at third. They got nine, five, three putouts. Yeah, two in each of the last three innings. Right field, Paro. And we head to the bottom of the ninth at Chase Field. The Encarnacion homer makes it 4 nothing. by Cox Communications and Fry's Food Stores is headed to Chase Field for a D-backs game on September 29th and you can get on board just stop by this month's participating Fry's Food Store in Cottonwood and you can enter to win two seats on the Fan Express bus so get on the bus Gus and visit us at Chase Field all the info you need is at Fox Sports Arizona dot com new pitcher on to work the ninth inning here with a four nothing lead Aaron Loop Fastballs, change-up slider combination from the lefty loop. Average fastball sits right at about 91, 92 miles per hour. Rally hats. And work to Cliff Pennington, Willie Bloomquist, who is out on deck, and Tony Campana, 8-9-1. and one. Willie will hit for Brandon McCarthy. Cliff is grounded out and flying out 0 for 2. You can do it. Bobby Boucher. He's been consistent. I'll give him that. He's got a really good battery life apparently too. <laughs> to check that out. And Cliff Pennington will take the turn. A little stutter step, and he'll make it easily.
You can do it. Lori tried to go top shelf. Couldn't quite make the glove save and a beauty. The glove save. Out of beauty. He's got there a little quicker than he was ready for as he tried to go up the ladder and make that catch right off the tip of the fingers of that glove on into foul territory down that left field line. Cliff Pennington understandably cautious. He wanted to make sure he could make it to second base before he fully committed and now in scoring position for Willie Bloomquist. And down 4 nothing in the ninth. You cannot get thrown out on the bases. Need base runners here. Kicks away from Tolley and Cliff will jog on into third. Tell you what, Edwin Encarnacion, a six of his last seven hits at Chase Field, the bent home runs, that two out, uh, two run homer, looming large right now. Toronto bullpen busy. 1 0 to Willie Bloomquist. Up the middle, and that gets through for a run. Something about Willie Bloomquist off the DL. He is absolutely filthy. And maybe you can do it. Willie has such a solid approach at the plate. Uh, he just looks to hit the ball back up the middle of the field. That way, if he's a little early, he'll pull it to left. If he's a little tardy, he'll hit it to right. But so many of his base hits this season have come right back up the middle of the field. Don't go anywhere. Diamondbacks, 30 wins in their final at bat, 29 wins in one run games, 12 walk offs, all the most in the majors. And they're angling for one more in all those categories right here. Alan Porter out to the mound to break this up. A.J. Pollock will hit for Tony Campana, but hold the phone. Here comes John Gibbons. All right, charge your phone while we take a break. We'll be back after this. Casey Jansen, he is one save away from tying Kelvy Escobar for fifth on the Blue Jays all-time list, 26 of 28 this year. Sinker-cutter curveball combination from Jansen. He does throw an occasional slider, an occasional changeup. Wouldn't expect to see those particular pitches uh, in this situation. He's going to go right after him with the sinker and the cutter. A.J. Pollock will hit for Tony Campana.
Diamondbacks trying to come back from down 4 nothing. Rally masks in place. 2 0. Oh. Casey Jansen has converted 14 of his last 15 save opportunities. His ERA in that span is 0.63. He's behind here, 3-0 to Pollock with the heart of the order coming up behind him. Been here before. Grit, don't quit. Had him eating on deck. There's the strike, 3-1. Blue Jays have lost seven of their last eight, nine of their last 11 on the road. Having problems closing out this one, it's a walk to Pollock. And the tying run comes to the plate with no outs in the ninth. Bloomquist at second, Pollock at first. Bob's having trouble throwing strikes. Yes, he is. You got to really keyhole him right here. I, I think you still have to think aggressively as a hitter, but you have to make sure it's one pitch in one zone that you want to swing at until Jansen proves he can throw some quality strikes. Rally shoe. <laughs> sure. There's one. It's one and one. I'm guessing that's just resting on his head. Yeah, we know he has one dirty sock. <laughs> High in the air to right, Sierra. Everyone stays put. That's a loud out number one. Shoe guy. It needs to be the other shoe. Hopefully the other shoe is about to fall right here. Here comes Paul Goldsmith. He could always uh, undo the laces and attach it to his head. Pete Walker. Chavez on deck. I mean, you can go out there as a pitching coach with the best advice in the world. True advice. Stay away from Goldie. You know, don't make a mistake from the middle in. But as we've seen from Jansen already in this game, he is not exactly hitting his spots. So uh, the game plan may be to stay away from Goldie, but whether Jansen can execute that game plan is another story. Goldie tying run at the plate, one out in the ninth. There's a strike, 0-1.
Two and one. Lou Bloomquist in second, A.J. Pollock at first. One run in, in the ninth, looking for three more. what I'm talking about you want the players oh. to decide the outcome of the game and that's just a horrible call man wow 2-2 uh, two, two, uh, that's a completely different situation in a 3-1 count Paul Goldschmidt in his career has hit nine home runs in the ninth inning of ball games. He's done it at least five or six times this year in the ninth. He's having a little mini conversation with Alan Porter back there. They're not looking at each other, but they were chatting. Rally caps in place. D back nation. Two and two. To short, Reyes, Gomes, and roll it. The at bat changed quickly. The rally shoe didn't work. And the Blue Jays hang on and win this one 4 1. And yesterday it was Yasmero Petit, and today it was Esmeal Rogers. Just could not get anything untracked offensively. I mean, Rogers came out of the game with a one hit shutout. And the Blue Jays bullpen able to make it stand up. Only gave up the one run there in the ninth after the leadoff double by Pennington. The base hit by Bloomquist brought him home. Diamondbacks made a run in the ninth, but they drop it 4 1 back uh, tomorrow night for the second game of this three game set. Let's go outside to uh, out in center field to Todd and Joe. Guys, Diamondback Lives. All right. Here. Steve, thank you very much.